Maybe you are wondering why the Bible used by Catholics is different from the Bible used by Protestants. The Catholic Bible consists of 73 books which include the deuterocanonical books. While the Protestant Bible consists of 66 books, that is, without the deuterocanonical books. So to answer this question, it would be good if we knew about the history of the Bible. Hopefully knowing the origins of the Bible will further strengthen our faith in true truth. The Catholic Church's Bible consists of 73 books. Namely the Old Testament consists of 46 books while the New Testament consists of 27 books. What is the history so that the Bible consists of 73 books, no more and no less? First, we will examine the Old Testament books which are divided into three main parts, the Law, the Prophets and the Texts. The first five books, the Book of Genesis, the Book of Exodus, the Book of Leviticus and the Book of Numbers and the Book of Deuteronomy are the core and foreigner of all the books of the Old Testament. At one time in history, this holy book was known to the Jewish people and was called the Torah or Pentateuch. For more than 2,000 years, the prophet Moses was considered the author of the Torah. Therefore the book is often called the Book of Moses and throughout the Bible. There are references to the Law of Moses. No one can be certain who wrote the Torah, but it cannot be denied that the prophet Moses played a unique and important role in the events recorded in the book. As Catholics, we believe that the Bible is the result of divine inspiration, and therefore the identity of human authors is an important. The prophet Moses placed a set of books in the Ark of the Covenant, approximately 3,300 years ago, much later. The prophets and texts were added to the Torah and formed the Old Testament. When exactly the contents of the Old Testament books were determined and considered complete is not known for certain. What is clear is that at least more than 100 years before the birth of Christ, the Old Testament books existed as known to Catholics today. The Old Testament books were originally written in Hebrew for Israel, God's chosen people. However, after the Jews were expelled from the land of Palestine and finally settled in various places, they lost their native language and started speaking Greek, which at that time was an international language. It was therefore important to provide them with a translation of the entire Old Testament in Greek. At that time there lived in Alexandria a large number of Greek-speaking Jews. During the reign of Ptolemy II Philadelphus 285 until to 46 BC, the project of translating the entire Jewish Bible into Greek was initiated by 70, or 70 to Jewish scribes. According to tradition, six people chosen to represent each of the 12 tribes of Israel. This translation was completed around 150 until 125 BC, and is called the Septuagint, which comes from the Latin meaning 7070, according to the number of translators. This book was very popular, and was recognized as the official scripture, Alexandrian canon of the expelled Jews living in Asia Minor and Egypt. At that time Hebrew was a dying language, and Jews in Palestine generally spoke Aramaic. So it is not surprising that the Septuagint was the translation used by Jesus the Apostles and the writers of the New Testament. In fact, 300 quotations from the Old Testament found in the New Testament come from the Septuagint. Please also remember that the entire New Testament was written in Greek. After Jesus was crucified and died, his followers did not become extinct but instead became stronger. In around 100 AD, rabbis or Jewish priests gathered in Jannia, Palestine, perhaps as a reaction to the Catholic Church. At this Council of Jamnia they established for criteria for determining their canon of scripture. 1. Written in Hebrew. 2. In accordance with the Torah. 3. Older than Ezra's time around 400 BC. 4. And written in Palestine. Based on the above criteria, they issued a new canon to reject seven books from the Alexandrian canon. 
namely as listed in the Septuagint, namely Tobit, Judith, Wisdom of Solomon, Sirach, Aruch, 1 Maccabees, to Maccabees, along with additions from the Book of Esther and Daniel. This was done solely for the reason that they could not find Hebrew versions of the books rejected above. The Catholic Church does not recognize this council of Jewish rabbis and continues to use the Septuagint. At the Council of Hippo in 393 AD and the Council of Carthage in 397 AD, the Catholic Church officially designated the 46 books resulting from the Alexandrian canon as the canon for the Old Testament books. For 16 centuries, the Alexandrian canons were unanimously accepted by the Church. Each of the seven books rejected by the Jamnia Council was cited by the Church Fathers as equal to the other books in the Old Testament. Church Fathers, some of whom are mentioned here, St. Polycarp, St. Irenaeus, Pope St. Clement, and St. Cyprians were patriarchs of the Church who lived in the first centuries, and their writings, although not included in the New Testament, form part of the deposit of faith. The seven books along with the two additional books that were rejected are known by the Catholic Church as Deuterocanonical Second Listed, which means roughly, included after much debate. Like the Old Testament books, the New Testament books were not written by one person, but were the work of at least eight people. The New Testament consists of four Gospels, 14 letters of the Apostle Paul, two letters of the Apostle Peter, one letter of the Apostle James, one letter of the Apostle Jude, three letters of the Apostle John, and the Revelation of the Apostle John, and the Acts of the Apostles written by Saint Luke, who also wrote the third book of the Gospel. From the first Gospel written by Saint Matthew, to the book of Revelation of John, it took approximately 50 years. The Lord Jesus himself, as far as we know, never wrote a single line from the New Testament. He never ordered the apostles to write down anything taught by him. He said, Then go and teach all nations, Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 until 20. Whoever listens to you, he listens to me, Luke chapter 10 verse 16. What Jesus commanded them was exactly what Jesus himself did. Convey God's word to people through words, convince, teach, and convert them face to face. So not through a book which might be damaged and lost, and its contents misinterpreted and changed, but through a safer and more natural way of conveying the word, namely by word of mouth. Thus the apostles taught the next generation to do the same after they died. Therefore, it is through traditions like this that the Word of God was conveyed to all generations of Christians as it was first received by the Apostles. Not a single line of the New Testament books was written until at least ten years after Christ's death. Jesus was crucified in 33 and the first New Testament book written, namely 1 Thessalonians, was not written until around 50 AD. Meanwhile, the last book written was the book of the Revelation of John around 90 until 100 AD. So we can see an important conclusion here. The Catholic Church and the Catholic faith existed before the Bible was created. Thousands of people were converted to Christianity through the preaching of the apostles and missionaries in various regions. And they believed in divine truth as we believe now. And even became saints without ever seeing or reading a single sentence of the New Testament. This is for the simple reason that at that time, the Bible as we know it did not yet exist. So how did they become Christians without ever seeing the Bible? That is, in the same way that non-Christians become Christians today, namely by hearing the word of God from the mouths of missionaries. The 27 books are accepted as New Testament scriptures by both Catholics and Protestants. The question is, who decided to canonize the New Testament as books of divine inspiration? We know that the Bible did not fall from the sky. So how do we know that we can believe any of these books? 
various bishops made lists of books recognized as divinely inspired, including Mileto, Bishop of Sardis in 175 AD, Saint Irenaeus, Bishop of Lyons, France in 185 AD, Eusebius, Bishop of Caesarea in 325 AD. In 382 AD, preceded by the Council of Rome, Pope Damasus wrote a decree listing the books of the Old and New Testaments consisting of 73 books. The Council of Hippo in North Africa in 393 established the 73 books of the Old and New Testaments. The Council of Carthage in North Africa in 397 established the same canon for the Old Testament and the New Testament. Note, this is the council that many Protestants and Protestant evangelicals consider to be authoritative for the canonization of the books of the New Testament. Pope St. Innocent I in 405 AD approved the canonization of the 73 books of the Bible and closed the canonization of the Bible. So the canonization of the Bible was officially decided in the 4th century by the councils of the Catholic Church and the Popes. Before the biblical canon was established, there was much debate. There are those who think that several New Testament books such as the letter to the Hebrews, the letter of Jude, the book of Revelation, and the letter of to Peter, are not the result of divine inspiration. Meanwhile, other parties argue that several books that are not canonized, such as the Shepherd of Hermas, the Gospels of Peter and Thomas, the letters of Barnabas and Clement are the result of divine inspiration. The official decision of the Catholic Church resolved the above matter until 1100 years later, until the time of the Protestant Reformation. There was no longer any debate about the books of the Bible. Looking at history, the Catholic Church used its authority to determine which books were included in the Bible, and ensure that everything written in the Bible was the result of divine inspiration. If it were not for the Catholic Church, Christians would not be able to know what is true. When the good news spread widely and many people became Christians, they were provided with translations of the Old Testament in their native languages, namely Armenian, Syriac, Coptic, Arabic and Ethiopian for the ancient Christians in these regions. For Christians in Africa where Latin was most widely spoken, there was a translation into Latin made around 150 AD, and also a subsequent translation for believers in Italy. However, all this was eventually superseded by St. Jerome's masterpiece in Latin called the Vulgate, in the 4th century. At that time there was a great need for the Holy Scriptures and there was danger because of the large variety of translations that existed. Therefore the monk, who was perhaps at that time the most learned man, at the behest of Pope St. Damascus in 382, translated the New Testament into Latin and corrected the existing versions in Greek. Then in Bethlehem between 392 and 404, he also translated the Old Testament books directly from Hebrew into Latin, except for the Psalms which were revised from an existing Latin version. This is the complete Bible officially recognized by the Catholic Church, whose value is immeasurable according to today's biblical scholars and continued to influence other versions until the time of the Protestant Reformation. Loss of original books Until the invention of the printing press in 1450, all Bibles were hand-copied, which we call manuscripts. The oldest complete Bible that still exists today comes from the 4th century, and its contents are the same as the Bible held by Catholics, namely consisting of 73 books. What happened to the original manuscripts? Written by the Gospel writers. There are several reasons for the disappearance of these original books. The first few hundred years were a time of persecution against Christians. The rulers who oppressed the Catholic Church destroyed everything of Christianity they could find. Furthermore, the pagans also repeatedly attacked Christian towns and villages and burned and destroyed churches and all religious objects they could find there. Furthermore, 
they even forced Christians to hand over holy books under threat of life, then burn the books. Another reason, the medium on which Bible verses were written. Cold papyrus crumbled very easily and was not durable, whereas parchment, which was made from animal skin and was more durable, was difficult to obtain. These two materials are referred to in 2 John chapter 1, verse 12 and 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 13. Early Christians, having made copies of the Bible, also did not care much about preserving the original book. They do not think. It is important to preserve the original writings by St. Paul or St. Matthew, because they fully believe in the Catholic Church which teaches through tradition, through the mouths of the popes and its bishops. Catholics do not base their teachings on the Bible alone, but also on living tradition from the infallible Catholic Church, Yam Ecclesia, E.B. Christus. All Christians are indebted to the religious, priests, monks and nuns who copied, reproduced, preserved, and distributed the Bible over the centuries. The monks were the most educated people of their time, and one of their main activities was copying the contents of the Bible, while the monasteries became centers for storing these Bible manuscripts. Generally, each monastery in the Middle Ages had its own library. No less than kings and nobles and famous people borrowed from these monasteries. Kings and nobles themselves, along with popes, bishops and abbots, often gifted ornately decorated scriptures to monasteries and churches throughout Europe. To copy a complete Bible would have required at least 10 months of labor and a large amount of expensive parchment to contain more than 35,000 verses in the Bible. This explains why many ordinary people cannot afford to have at least a complete set of Bibles in their homes. They usually have copies of a number of popular Bible chapters. So the custom of having separate parts of the Bible is a completely Catholic custom, and one that is still practiced today. The Bible in the Middle Ages was generally written in Latin. This is not done at all to make it difficult for people who want to read it. Most people at that time could not read, while those who could read could also understand Latin. Latin was the universal language at that time. Those who could read preferred to read the Vulgate, the Latin version of the Bible. Due to this fact, there is no strong reason to translate the Bible into local languages on a large scale. However, Please remember that throughout history the Catholic Church has continued to provide translations of the Bible in local languages. In 1529, Martin Luther proposed a Palestinian canon establishing 39 books in Hebrew as the Old Testament canon. Luther sought justification from the decisions of the Council of Jannia which was a council of Jewish priests so not a council of the Christian Church, that the seven books excluded from the Old Testament do not have their original books in Hebrew. Luther actually did this, because a number of verses contained in these books actually strengthened the doctrines of the Catholic Church and contradicted the new doctrines developed by Martin Luther himself. For similar reasons, Martin Luther also almost threw away several other books, the letter of James, the letter to the Hebrews, the book of Esther and the book of Revelation. It was only because of strong persuasion by the more conservative supporters of the Protestant Reformation that the above books were retained in the Protestant Bible. However, no less than Martin Luther blasphemed at the letter of James did not deserve to be included in the Bible. To support one of his famous doctrines, namely solified, namely that we are justified by faith alone, in the German translation of the Bible, Martin Luther added the word alone to Romans chapter 3 verse 28. So the verse reads, because we believe that a person is justified by faith alone, and not because he keeps the law. It is not surprising 
that Martin Luther blasphemed the letter of the Apostle James and tried to throw it out of the New Testament. Because in fact in the letter of James there are many verses that destroy the doctrine of sola fide created by Martin Luther. Among other things, in James chapter to verse 14 until 15 it is written, What good is it, my brothers, if someone says that he has faith, but he has no works, can that faith save him? And James chapter to verse 17. So it is with faith, if faith is not accompanied by works, then faith is essentially dead, and James chapter to verse 24. So you see, that man is justified by his works, and not by faith alone. The question now is, which book of the Old Testament? Would you rather read the Old Testament books used by Jesus, the writers of the New Testament books and the early church, or the Old Testament written by Jewish priests who rejected Jesus Christ and oppressed ancient Christians? Even before the outbreak of the Protestant Reformation, there were many versions of the Bible circulating at that time. Many of them contained deliberate errors, as in the cases of heretics, church dissidents who attempted to support doctrines of their own creation by writing a Bible that had changed its contents. There are also unintentional mistakes due to human error considering that the work of copying the Bible is done by hand, verse by verse, which takes a lot of time and energy. Therefore, at the Council of Florence in the 15th century, the Catholic Church confirmed the decisions made at previous councils regarding the books of the Bible. After the outbreak of the Protestant Reformation, at the Council of Trent by the Catholic Church in 1546 a decree was issued, which approved the Vulgate, the Latin version of the Bible as the only recognized and valid version permitted to Catholics. This Bible was revised by Pope Sixtus V in 1590, and also by Pope Clement VIII in 1593. From this Vulgate, the famous English translation was produced, namely the Dowerheim's Bible. Furthermore, at the First Vatican Council, the Catholic Church again confirmed the decisions of previous councils regarding the Bible. Therefore, at the end of this video, we can make important conclusions. Historically, the Bible is a Catholic book. The New Testament was written, copied, and collected by Catholic Christians. The official canon of the books that make up the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament, was determined authoritatively by the Catholic Church in the 4th century. Therefore, it was from the Catholic Church that Protestants were able to have the Bible. According to common sense and logic, the Catholic Church which has the power to determine the infallible free from error word of God, must also have infallible free from error authority and also guidance from the Holy Spirit. As you have seen, despite declarations by the Catholic Church, we have absolutely no guarantee that what is written in the Bible is the true Word of God. If you believe in the contents of the Bible, then you must also believe in the authority of the Catholic Church, which guarantees the authenticity of the Bible. It is contradictory for Protestants to accept the Bible but reject the authority of the Catholic Church. Logically, Protestants should not quote the Bible at all, because they have no way of determining which books are genuine, unless of course they accept the teaching authority of the Catholic Church.